This is the Chris Abraham Show. Welcome to Chris Cast, which is now known as the Chris Abraham Show, episode 24, 24, 24, 24. Anyway, my name's Chris Abraham, and I can speak terrible, terrible French, terrible Spanish, and even worse German. My uh, English is only passing, and I am here to entertain you, although this is also the most boring, redundant, and ridiculous podcast you've ever listened to. So, welcome. Uh, today's episode is uh, episode four, uh, sorry, season four, episode 24, and hopefully I made all my mistakes in this first introductory segment because... I made all the mistakes, and I think the reason that is, is because I am recording on the Anchor app on my phone and not on one of my uh, voice recorders in the field. So hopefully the sound will be better, I don't know, but this episode is about the rewards of exercise, and as you might know by now, If you don't know me by now, you will never, 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 never know me. Um, Is that I'm trying to row one hour moderately on my Model C circa 2010, circa 2005, I don't know, I bought it used. Concept 2 Indoor Rower, The Complete Exercise. Uh, One hour moderate uh, exercise every day for the rest of my life. Last night I missed it because I needed to clean my apartment and I decided that that was going to be my workout for the day. But I must tell you that I started off really like sick and dead and... Getting to now uh, has required a lot of focus because if you've ever been completely feeling weak and sick and unhealthy and unfit, you know that even like standing at the uh, sink to do a sink full of um, dishes and so forth or standing for a long time or any of that stuff, like I, I'm... I was 350 pounds and just so weak. And I must, the, the, the point of this episode is to say that um, instead of diminishing returns, uh, moderate everyday full body exercise uh, for duration, in this case an hour to 90 minutes a day, gives you equity It literally is a compound interest behavior. Uh, It has, especially for someone who isn't semi-elite or athletic or or really active or a member of a gym or whatnot, um, the beginning stages of putting yourself out there in terms of moderate exercise for 30 minutes to an hour every day is that there are real ripple effects, and we'll talk about that in a second, although I think I completely spoiled it. Welcome, and welcome to the Chris Abraham Show, Season 4, Episode 24. 24. 24, that's it. Uh, 24. Anyway, uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hopefully there will be less flubs in this segment. But I I really need to tell you, like today and last night, I needed to clean my apartment. And 
to be honest, uh, when I was really the heaviest and the sickest and the most uh, close to being the weakest I've ever been, I would need to move around the apartment and sit on a BOSU ball or sit on a Swedish or Swiss ball. And uh, instead of, you know, leaning over and kneeling down and getting on the floor and doing that kind of thing. Like, I was really struggling against my weight and my body and my my weakness. And um, I've been doing uh, rowing every day uh, in addition to my usual walking everywhere uh, for 17 days now. And now um, it's... I'm not out there running yet. I'm not on the rowing machine. I'm sorry, I'm not on the water yet rowing. I'm not uh, out and about on my bicycle yet and all those other things. But I'm finding that my capability in the world is extremely, is is benefiting from uh, that 60 minutes of additional daily, nightly, in my case, moderate exercise on the Concept 2. Uh, I would dare say that 30 minutes to 60 minutes on a stationary bike would have the same effect. Although the Concept 2 indoor rower, which people who row uh, on the river, like in crew teams, we call it the erg. Uh, By erg, it means ergometer. And if we ask Google, let's ask Google. Hey Google, what does ergometer mean? Here's the definition of ergometer, an apparatus which measures work or energy expended during a period of physical exercise. So there's that. It's exactly what it is. Um, And it is a torture device, according to people who've been on a crew team. It's a torture device for those people in CrossFit and other types of uh, practical uh, ballistic type of exercises because when people who are extremely highly activated and extremely strong and extremely performance oriented, or as the British would say, orientated, um, it, the, the devices, uh, are, 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 are sprinting devices. The devices are power devices. When people see the concept two, or they see an air bike, or, or they even see a, uh, a stationary bicycle, all they think is, um, is sprinting, uh, really going to town, and then rolling off and vomiting onto the floor. Now, uh, in my world, the Concept 2, uh, unless I do a Power 20 or a Power 10, and I've been adding those in because of the equity that I've uh, grown in the um, day-by-day compound interest of putting in the 60 minutes every day, I have gotten much stronger because compound interest doesn't, it's not a linear way of growing. Um, if you talk to sports and fitness and, and personal trainers and experts in the field, you will quickly learn from them that, uh, the, that it's similar exercising and getting benefits from exercising, including weightlifting, including running, including all these things, you will, it's sort of like um, GarageBand on Apple or Photoshop. It's really easy at first to get a lot of usefulness from the recording app Audacity or from Canva or from Photoshop. All these apps have a very quick learning curve and then they become insanely more difficult. So the first wins that you will have by committing yourself to daily exercise, um, let me add to that uh, um, kettlebell swings. 
I wouldn't say that you could do 60 or should do 60 minutes of kettlebell swings. But if you find a lightweight, like a 12 or 8 kilogram kettlebell, and you're willing to do, or even a 12 or 16, depending on how strong you are, and if you were willing to do 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes of kettlebell swings, I would say do those things in addition to your baseline uh, stationary bike or Concept 2 moderate exercise. And as an aside, um, when I say the daily 60 minutes on the Concept 2, I mean in addition to everything else. Like I DNR'd, did not row last night, even though I should have done both. I should have done the hour and I should have done the cleaning. Unfortunately, I was running out of time, so I chose the cleaning because my cleaning team is coming here today, and the place looks the place looks like like uh, the streets of L.A., the streets of Manhattan. Uh, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. I still have until 1 o'clock today to uh, finish up, but I thought I would I was thinking about the uh, the compound interest. Let's see if I can get Google to go into the details of what compound interest is. One second. Hey, Google, can you explain compound interest? On the website bankrate.com, they say, in simple terms, compound interest is interest you earn on interest. With a savings account that earns compound interest, you earn interest on the initial principal plus on the interest that accumulates over time. People also ask me, what is compound interest with example? Want to hear the answer? Yes. On the website Forbes.com, they say, compound interest is when you add the earned interest back into your principal balance, which then earns you even more interest, compounding your returns. Let's say you have $1,000 in a savings account that earns 5% in annual interest. In one year, you'd earn $50, giving you a new balance of $1,050. So, that's great. Now I can share my uh, great insight. So, by compound interest, every day you exercise, you get a... Um, you get a, a fitness, um, payment. You get, you basically become fitter every day and that little bit more fitness and the more efficiency of your machine, of your body, of your lymph flow, of your blood flow, of your oxygen flow, the oxygenation of your body, the fact that you are, it's easier for you to sleep at night. It rip, it has a ripple effect but a compound in ripple effect, which is to say the fitness gleaned from the day before after sleep, after resting for the 23 hours before your next row, that fitness is added to your time in the seat the very next day. And since it's moderate exercise, the amount of recovery should be well within the 23 hours. So you will have you will have had full recovery before your next row and then even though at 52 i can tell that my first 10 15 minutes of rowing is against warming up once i get into the um once i get into the heart of the thing i and i and i focus on an audiobook or the television or a podcast or uh, a movie or a tv show I look back at my numbers, and when I was phasing out, I was actually performing more strongly than I did before. So, I know that by the end of the week, you might feel exhausted adding uh, a moderate 30 minutes to 60 minutes to 90 minutes of rowing into your life, but you will start to incrementally see that your baseline for what is moderate exercise starts moving upward. There is a doctor who is also a physiologist and an, and, and a runner, I believe. His name is Maffetone, Dr. Maffetone. Let's see who he is. 
Hey, Google, who is Dr. Maffetone? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Hey, Google, who is Dr. M-A-F-F-A-T-O-N-E? On the website marathontrainingacademy.com, they say, Philip Maftone is an internationally recognized researcher, educator, clinician, and author in the field of nutrition, exercise and sports medicine, stress management, and biofeedback. He is the author of more than a 20 books, including the Big Book of Endurance Training and Racing. Hey Google, what is the M-A-F-F-E-T-O-N-E method? Here you go. Hey Google, tell me about the M-A-F-F-E-T-O-N-E method. Here you go. Hey Google, explain what the Maffetone method is. On the website, Medline Hey Google, Plus stop. Hey Google, explain to me what the M A F F E T O N E method is. Here you go. A piece of so and so. Anyway, what the Maffetone method is, and I already knew, I just hoped that I would get a pretty version of it. The Maffetone method is heart rate based, right? So I don't know if I can explain this well, but. The more fit you are, the more efficient a machine you are, means that you can't. Your um, you should be able to perform at a higher level, uh, quicker, stronger, etc. The fitter you are, the lower your heart rate will be at load. So. Let's say now I row at 3 minutes 30 seconds per 500 meters and my heart rate is 115. And then let's say 6 months goes by and my moderate rowing is 2 minutes 50 seconds uh, for uh, per 500 meters, but my heart rate is still at 115 beats per minute. Um, at, at first, when I was struggling to do 30 minutes, at 3 minutes 30 seconds, uh, as a moderate exercise, without going ahead and sweating and losing my breath and uh, jacking my heart rate, my concept of moderate exercise was 3 minutes 30 seconds per 500 meters. But six months later or a year later, um, the same level of effort, in other words, what I perceive as moderate exercise, is now performing uh, at, uh, at two minutes, 50 seconds per 500 meters, which is to say that when you do a Maffetone test, they like making you test at 60 minutes, let's say, or at um, uh, exactly, uh, 10,000 meters, let's say. So when you do your weekly test, you row 10,000 meters and then you plot a graph or graph, um, or you do it for 60 minutes and then take the number of meters you rode and then plot a graph, or you do it for 10,000 meters and record how many minutes uh, you rode and then plot a graph. And it tends to show that over time, uh, your 10,000 meters using the same level of input in terms of your perceived moderate pace results in uh, more meters per 60 minutes or in the case of 10,000 meters, fewer number of minutes required to achieve 10,000 meters. As a result, when someone says, in slow jogging, in my slow rowing, or in the concept of the Maffetone method, which uses uh, heart rate as a definition of where you do not perform above, and he has a calculus for that, but I would say that in my case, mine is... Um, 128. I don't want to go above 128, I believe. Um, it means that uh, Nico Nico is not 
According to slow jogging, Nico Nico pace is the pace where you can have a merry conversation and smile, which is to say that you keep your breath and you keep your good attitude. Maffetone method says the same thing, but it uses heart rate as a baseline. Moderate exercise. The point of this is the um, compound interest means that over time, your effort, while constant according to your relative experience, will add more and more um, absolute effort into your workout, meaning you will be stronger, faster, quicker in the, with, with the same amount of perceived effort. Anyway, I'm going to take a, bre- a break for a second because my coffee's done and I will be right back. Hey there, this is uh, another segment. This is not the regular closing out segment. I broke the last one into two because I needed to address my stovetop Mocha Express coffee maker. Because when it, once it's boiled through, uh, you need to take it off the range and serve it. Because otherwise, it'll start boiling off uh, moisture and boiling off liquid, and then it becomes um, bitter. So my advice for stovetop mocha uh, express is lowest heat possible, and then wait. Um, Invariably, it will boil, it will push through, but I've always had better success at the lowest heat than I have at the highest heat. And for me, the coffee always turns out splendidly because of the way it works. If it, if it, if it boils, it still boils and pushes, um, steam through the, what I use is Cafe Bustello, uh, through the grinds and into the carafe. Um, it does that slowly or quickly. And wow, that's a great analogy for what I've been talking about. If, you're intimidated by 30 minutes or by 60 minutes or any of that. That is my decision to give, uh, you know, around 10,000 meters a day for the rest of my life. But I've been rowing since, uh, since I was 18. Um, and it's ambitious for me. I don't always make it. Sometimes I'll only do uh, two-thirds or three-quarters of that. The concept of compound interest works even if you only do 20 minutes a day for the rest of your life. You will still get uh, linearly, no, non-linearly, no. um, uh, What is the term? Hockey stick. Um, You will receive a... I know the term. I use it all the time. You will not extrapolate... You know the term, your, your, um, your strength growth, growth will not be linear. It will be, um, it'll be compound. It'll be, Hey Google, what is it when, uh, you, um, what, what is the hockey stick? According to Wikipedia, hey Google, what is hockey. Ho- what is the hockey stick in economics? On the website investopedia.com, they say a hockey stick chart is a chart characterized by a sharp increase after a relatively flat and quiet period. It is generally observed in scientific research measuring medical results or environmental studies. In cases of business sales, a hockey stick chart is represented by a sudden and dramatic increase in sales. Ah, exponential growth. See, I knew that it would unlock something in my head. You will get exponential results when you commit to doing uh, exercise, especially at the beginning. The end result might be a plateau. The end result might be a plateau, which is why, um, you know, there is a plateau of human performance. But way low on the totem pole, pardon me, is that, sorry, I apologize if saying totem pole is um, 
thoughtless and rude about our Native American brothers and sisters and their storied history. But what I mean is, um, if you are extremely close to the starting line of your health journey, you will grow and grow and grow and grow uh, until you hit a plateau. And my dad always told me about plateaus. So if you do 20 minutes a day at moderate exercise, at moderate, um, moderate, of moderate exercise, uh, you will really quickly uh, exponentially grow in fitness and success until the work that you're doing, unless, of course, you are really pushing your 20 minutes on the earth to the point where you're really doing 20 minutes of highly intense workout. If you, if you keep, if you follow the math, Maffetone method and commit 20 minutes a day and keep on pushing harder as your uh, body becomes accustomed to that 20 minutes and make sure that you always hit that particular target heart rate, but no higher, uh, I don't think you will hit any plateaus. I think the beautiful thing about the Maffetone method is that it completely re reframes your health based on your current health. So it's super easy for people who are super unfit and it's super hard for people who are extremely fit. It is self, um, self-aligning, uh, self-reframing, and as a result, you probably won't hit plateaus. However, let's say you go for a walk every day. At some point, you will hit a health plateau, and you will need to throw weight on your back, or go further, or walk faster, or create some sort of... Um, uh, variability to create more load to bring more performance out of your body. Hitting plateaus are natural things. Something in the X factors need to change in order to take you to the next level. But as we've seen from the two hour, um, the, the, the uh, ceiling of a marathon taking more than two hours out in the wild, there are, you know, you are going to reach at some point and do not predict your own. Let the, let the behavior choose your plateau. At some point, you're going to reach uh, the limit of your ability. Um, and I got to tell you, as an adaptable human mammalian person, that is a lot more than you think. And because of this compound interest, Every day, you become more capable of becoming an elite athlete. Every day, because of that compound interest of your work, you will become fitter, you will become leaner, you, your heart will become stronger, your uh, lungs will become uh, more able to convert oxygen into red blood cells, your general lymphatic system will become stronger, your muscles will become stronger, uh, your resolve will become stronger, your focus, your obsession, your addiction, your enculturation of this kind of exercise into your life will change. You will become lighter. Uh, it will be easier for you to climb stairs. It'll be easier for you to not take the car. It'll become easier for you to carry your own uh, groceries home and to take walks with your friends and to join them on athletic events such as hikes. And then it will all spiral in the same way that if you have a heart attack, your uh, fitness spirals down. You will find that when you start to actively recover with the Maffetone method or with daily slow rows or walks or jogs or, or, or um, stationary bike rides or uh, ski ergs or even treadmills or whatever, using kettlebells, weight training, um, cables, 
dumbbells, barbells, dips, body weight exercises, burpees, any of those things. The more capable you are, the more capable you will be. The lighter you are, the easier it is to stay on your feet. The stronger you are, the easier it is to move quickly on your feet. Uh, when it comes down to it, the goal is to be able to pop up off the floor or pop up off the couch or pop up off a chair. Because all of these things, while useful in terms of your longevity and your general energy level and so forth, the goal here through moderate exercise for the rest of your life is to make sure that you stay out of the nursing home for as long as possible, right? Long game is to make sure that you're not crumpled in a chair, that your spine is straight and that you walk proudly and that you jump out of your chair, that you can play with your grandkids and children, uh, that you can uh, uh, take a new lover, uh, that you have um, body pride, that you have fitness pride, that you say things like, I uh, look good for my age, or I'm strong for my age, rather than, or just, I look good, or I'm strong, rather than, I look a little older than I am, that sort of thing. It'll change your narrative, it'll change your pride, it'll change your attitude. Um, depression is a medical condition, so it might... I'm not going to say that it's a panacea uh, for everything that ails you, but I dare say that it probably couldn't hurt. And uh, I hope you... And by the way, uh, Concept 2 brand new is under $1,000 off of Amazon or Concept2.com. And I think, that's, I think you deserve uh, to buy one today. Otherwise, there's a lot of other solutions, and there's the gym, and there's a million other brands of rowers. Um, but I hope one day that we can create a boat, a virtual boat on uh, the Google uh, Challenges, on, uh, sorry, on Concept2 Logbook Challenges, so that you and I and we can get together and start doing these long, um, daily you know, 10,000, 20,000, I think 45, 48,000 is, is a marathon. I've never done that. Hey, Google, how many meters is a marathon? One marathon is equal to 42,195 meters. So we could do that together. Um, and I hope you really enjoyed this episode. I hope it was motivational. I want you to know that the baby steps are rewarded. The baby steps are rewarded. The more you put a load on your body, the more your body adapts to the load, and the easier that load will be in your subjective opinion the next time you, uh, the next time you load your body with the same load. In fact, it has overflow effects, so uh, you will be able to uh, not only lift that weight more easily, but you'll also be able to increase your, you know, your maximum uh, weight for one rep. In other words, uh, performance at a mafetone level overflows into maximum performance benefits. All right, next is the contact. Thank you so much. I know I've been saying the same thing over and over again, but I'm kind of wiggly about it, and I'll talk to you soon. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is season four episode Bente Cuatro or Vin Quatre or Hey Google, what's German for twenty four? In German, that's Fionzwanzig. What else should I translate? Nothing. Got it. I'll stop translating. Vier und zwanzig. Vier und zwanzig. Showing pictures that match. Vier und zwanzig. Anyway, um, my name's Chris Abraham. 
You can reach me at chris at abraham dot. Stop, stop, Google. Hey, Google, stop. Hey, Google, stop. Sorry. All right. What should I call you? Chris. You'd like me to call you by the name Chris. Is that right? Yes. Sure. I'll call you Chris from now on. Thank you. Just doing my job. Oy vey. All right. Chris at Abraham.su. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. Um, I, uh, I am also at plus one, two oh two, three five two, five zero five one. You can call me or text me or WhatsApp me or signal me or telegram me, uh, but I wouldn't bet on it unless we're already friends, already know each other and so forth. Uh, you can reach me at calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 15. There we'll probably have a better job meeting. Uh, you can uh, find me at youtube.com slash chrisabraham, anchor.fm slash chrisabraham, facebook.com slash chrisabraham, uh, twitter.com slash chrisabraham, instagram.com slash chrisabraham, chris-abraham.com is my uh, Tumblr and uh, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Chris Abraham is my LinkedIn and that might be it. Je ne connais pas. Je ne sais pas. Find me on uh, Duolingo. I think I broke a 50 day streak um, but I've been trying to teach myself Latin American Spanish because I have a building filled with awesome first-generation neighbors, and I would love to be able to joke with them in Espanol. Lots of love, which is not what LOL means. And I will talk to you soon. Hasta luego. Hasta mañana. Uh, a tout à l'heure. A demain. Peut-être, j'espère. Uh, et um, au wiedersehen, mofo. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yay! Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.